nitpicks. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Nitpicks. And Alan, I seen that. So this is actually the end of the podcast. Uh, the podcast was over two hours long. We talked about all six episodes. And, and we Chubbs. Deci- and Chubbs. Can't forget about Chubbs. Uh, we decided that we're going to, instead of putting out a two-hour episode, we're just going to put out like six 20-minute episodes or something like that of each well, individual. The one, on... <laughs> well, some, one of them will be like 40 minutes and one of them will be like two minutes. That's but, yeah. true. Yeah. But we're, we're, I'm going to split them all up. And so this will be one of those six episodes. It'll be the first one, obviously. You're not going to have this intro being like episode four. No, I'm just going to reuse this intro for all. Oh, okay. But, but I'm going to leave that part in the intro as well. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so do Black Museum? Yes. Black the dumbest, Museum. The dumbest one, but also one that I enjoyed a lot. So the the guy, the museum curator, was great. The actor, yeah, yeah, he was so and compelling. That, that opening story with the doctor was really good. Yes, it was I really like that. So disturbing the visuals, the when he was all cut up and stuff. Yeah, it was proper good. It was proper yeah. like like you know like monster mash like yes, great stuff there. Um, I wish that would have really been. Fun. I, I don't know if it had much more room to go. Nah. That's but... why if it if it could have been a full episode it would have been made into a full episode, but like they clearly didn't have anywhere else to go with it. Yeah. I, but like if you could have cut out like Archangel or Crocodile and put that in its place. Yeah, it just doesn't really have like I mean, it's kind of run its course yeah. in the 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it just didn't really need more to it, sadly. Yeah. Um, it's just really good as mm-hmm. it is. Um, and then like the relationship one is then like, like really dumb. Yes. But like is a good concept, but it's yeah. really dumb. Yeah, it was like uh... the fact that he's like, they're like, Oh, do you want to put your, your wife's head into your head? <laughs> it's irreversible. And she'll be in there the whole time. He's like, oh, I need to think about it. And he's like, well, your wife wants it. And he's like, oh, okay, then I'll do it. Yeah. And then it's like, immediately after that happens, the guy's like, well, obviously they're going to have like a not good time. Like, we all know that that's obvious. We all know that if we had someone else living in our head, we would hate it. Yeah. And it would be like horrible. Like, that's, that's immediately everyone's first thought. So... Rather than making it make sense and making the audience be like, oh, this is something that I wouldn't mind, so that you can understand why anyone would do that, they just immediately jump to them arguing. Like, there's no time of them being, like, cute together. Because, like, if your wife's been in a coma for years, like, and then she's, like, in your head, there's surely going to be at least two months of, like, good times and happiness. At least. And then it just immediately jumps to them, like, yelling at each other. And this is kind of like, well, obviously that would happen. Yeah. Um, the, well, even just the idea of being able to do it was so strange. Yeah, and like, then she's she's really weird about it. Like, she's been in a coma for years. Her husband's been nice enough to give up his his privacy and his brain yeah. to her. Yeah, she's acting so entitled. She's acting, like, really, really entitled and, like, demanding and, like, getting aggressive with him and and acting quite strange. So, like, I just I just immediately was like, okay, all right, fine. But then it went on for, like, ages. Like, it went on for way too long. Yeah. It was really repetitive. And then it became, like, a weird comedy when he got a new girlfriend it just got really like weird because his new girlfriend (laughs) was really intense like i think this man's just attracted to the wrong wrong kind of women maybe because he he seems to be dating like just like nut jobs 
like really insane people. Well, they got together on a one night stand, right? They got together, she got pregnant, and they got married. Yeah. And they had the perfect relationship. Apparently which... so. But, uh, no, when the, when the woman, the new girlfriend chokes the bear, I was like, man, how does that actress feel? Like, how do you, that's gotta be a tough, tough well, role spoke, to try to pull off. I spoke to Chad about it and he said that he found that really funny. So like, not everyone hated that. I thought it was really dumb though. I thought that was cheesy. Yeah. Cause it's just kind of like, yeah, I feel like the boner joke was in, like, was dumb as well. Yeah. But like, Chad found that funny too. So like, some people are finding these jokes funny. Um, and I do semi respect Chad, so, <laughs> but yeah, um, <laughs> it's just like, that's dumb. And then, and then he like puts her on pause or whatever. Yeah. And then, um, she gets turned into the teddy bear and she can only say two things. And I like that idea of being trapped inside a teddy bear, but they kind of already went there. Yeah. With um USS Callister where he's trapped. Or and even kind of already went that in, in White Christmas. White Christmas where he was trapped inside the cookie. Yeah. So it's like repeating things again of like, oh no, I'm trapped inside a thing and I have to be really bored all the time. Um and like I don't know why they didn't use more of the theme of like being a parent and like sharing like possession of a child because it seemed like that's where they would go with that. Yeah, well, the pause feature was so fascinating. The because to her subjectively it was instant, and all of a sudden it was four months later. And then, like, if that I, I felt like that was where they should have played around with is just skipping through the kid's life and her, you know, kind of suffering through that until she gets removed and placed into something else. Not necessarily a teddy bear, but yeah. I don't know. It was just, yeah, that, that storyline wasn't. And then the science of it is so dumb as well. Yeah. It's like such a cliche. Like we only use 40% of our brain. So we can fit another person in your brain. And it's like, it's like limitless or like whatever. Like, oh, you only use like 12% of your brain. Yeah. Like, no, you don't. Like, it doesn't <laughs> work that way. You use a hundred percent of your brain just at different times. Exactly. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm not going to be using my central lobe for the next two years. <laughs> I don't need to recall long-term memory. You can I, have that spot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need the part of my brain that makes decisions. <laughs> Do you want to have the artistic side or the logical side? Uh, I was, I, I would have the artistic side. I'd just be like, oh wow, that's pretty. Look at that. And then like the other, hey, the DJ the other is so person, beautiful. Yeah. And then you would be in my head and you'd be like, no, we're going to be late. <laughs> like, Alan, can I just stop and look at this daisy? And it's going to die, Sam. The daisy's not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> Everything dies. <laughs> And, and then like the inside the museum is like where it's really dumb. Like really, yes. really dumb. That was like, very to upsetting. start off, she's like driving and she runs out of gas and it's like she must have planned the exact journey so yeah. that the car would run out of gas exactly in time. For also her to unnecessary. Stop she could have yeah. just pretended she, she ran out of gas. Yeah, exactly. She literally runs out of gas and then she acts like she sees this museum and she's never heard of it before, which is a great performance, even though no one's looking at her. <laughs> and, and she's already got that water bottle in her bag, like ready and primed. She's like set. Like her mum must be in her head talking to her the whole time, but she's like playing it off as if she's not even hearing her mum. Uh, and then she gets there and she's got her English accent ready. Yeah. Because so, if, if the guy knew she was American, like he would immediately like know that she was planning on killing him. <laughs> so it's a good job. She did that accent all the way through. Well, because, she didn't have an American accent at the end, did she? Yeah, I she did. She I was like, it, I'm, a, I'm not British. I'm American. Cause her dad's American and her mom's American. So it wouldn't make sense if she was English. No, I knew she wasn't English. I just thought it was an African accent. No, oh, no, no, it was American. Mm. She said, I'm American. Okay. And then, 
she goes in and she knows for sure that the guy is going to let her in and she knows for sure that no one else is going to be at the museum. Yeah. And I don't know when she hacked the um, air conditioning, but she, she did that some, she did that at some point. And then she goes in down there and she knows that he's going to talk to her for long enough for him to get hot enough to need water. And then she knows for sure that he won't have any water in the building. (laughs) <laughs> and that he gulped down her water. An entire bottle. An like, entire bottle. She she would just knew. Like, what would she do if he immediately was like, oh, no, I've got my own water? Yeah. Or he just went, hang on, someone's hacked into this? I can fix it. <laughs> I mean, he's a computer guy. He's like a tech guy. Yeah. So, like, the idea that, like, he's not competent enough to, like, fix the AC is kind of weird to me. Yeah. And then they've got like a, a virtual consciousness of her dad who may or may not have killed a weather girl, which they keep putting in the other stories, yeah. this weather girl like story, but it's not actually like something they touch on. That's just the thing that he was arrested for. And then you've kind of got an interesting concept with like a virtual celebrity or a virtual prisoner that you can pub- punish yeah. for the rest of their life. But like, We've seen it in US Callis- USS Callister. We've seen it like in other things. And at this point, it's like kind of like a dead meme because we've seen it like yeah. for the last, we've seen it in the last two stories as well with these cookies and these ideas and stuff like that. Well, before, um, before we get on to him, all the, all the things in the museum, most of them don't make any sense why they would be there. Like the bathtub from Crocodile. Why would the bathtub be in there? That's not... Because the man built the memory machines. But why wouldn't the memory machine or something like that be in there? Like, the bathtub seems... Because it's the bathtub in which the man died. It's more gruesome. I guess. Those memory machines are just standard. Everyone's got one of those. How did he get the lollipop for the USS Callister? Also, why would eBay. they... eBay. eBay. You think the lady just kept it and sold it on eBay? Definitely. <laughs> and why would they know? How would they know that he was... It, that, that that was a tragedy other than the guy just dying? Because they went in the game and asked him about it. They went and hunted he's down still in, He's still in the game. They could have gone in and talked to him about it. So you think his consciousness is still trapped in the game, even though he didn't upload oh, his yeah. DNA? No, yeah, forever. His consciousness is in that game forever. Yeah, they could have got some of his spit because, like, he's just lying there. He's still, he's still alive, but he probably would starve to death of like soon, so he wouldn't be yeah. trapped there forever. Because it was ten um, days, everyone had off work, and so presumably no one would check on him for those ten days, and it'd so probably see, be those, even more. Those cookies killed a real human being. Yeah. So they're, they're, on a morally spectrum, they they've committed more wrongs than he has. Yeah, that's what All makes that episode so good. All he did was want to play so Star good. Trek with them. That's not what makes the episode good. It's so good, because the question is, is he really a bad guy? They never stay that. That's, that's just something that you've, you've told yourself to make what you that, think the episode's what's better. What's the difference between your theory about how Hang the DJ is good? Because now they have this whole relationship that you get to imagine. It's the same thing. Mine's got it's more. It's not the same thing. <laughs> it's the same you leap know, of it's logic. It's not the same le- <laughs> It's not the same leap of logic. You <laughs> literally spend an hour seeing two people in a close no, relationship see, see where a, they're together the in of. order to determine a perfect match. And then at the end, they both have a light up phone that says each other is the perfect match. I wish and then you would have left the bar. it cuts on them smiling at each other. I wish you would have left the bar. It would have Then been you're so going, good. it's a, it's a massive leap. For me to say, well, they're probably going to get together and be happy. Like the last hour w- in as, which we've seen them much be as... together and be happy. And then you're looking at US as Callister and saying, oh, the fact that he, he wasn't that much of a villain is something that everyone's acknowledged and is some, a clear thing that Charlie Brooker wants us to think about. No, I'm saying that the, the question, the, what the show puts forward is, is he a bad person? At least that's the question. I think that's the important question. When you watch that episode, you need to ask yourself, is he the bad person? And that's what makes that episode good. 
And the answer is no. He's not a bad person. He's not a bad person. Not a bad person. And he dies unfairly. And he his whole life unfairly. is crap. Those cookies need to, need to be punished for what they've done. Yeah. They should be in but the Black ocean, Museum. Ocean, oceaning 11 a man's death. Well, th- like, that girl, uh, the actual girl, the, um, the one who stole the lollipop. Her DNA is everywhere. Yeah. She should she go. Her to- fingerprints are all over that crime scene. <laughs> she should go to prison for, for she, murder. Well, she probably did. Yeah. And it's not a massive leap. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Black Museum. Yeah, anyway. They Black have, Museum. And then what, the even dumber thing happens where she puts his consciousness <laughs> that, inside the virtual consciousness. That was the worst, worst moment of any of Black Mirror. That that was thing. so dumb. How does that make sense? Is he only using forty percent of his virtual brain? I think it's unlimited. Well, it depends on your data. So, how plan. many people do you reckon you can put inside this virtual man? It's just like those Russian do you nesting think you can dolls. You just keep piling them up. Yeah, you just keep putting them inside and putting them inside. You maybe, can't put two together. So you, maybe he inside the guy, the museum guy's head. There's another guy's head that she didn't know about. And so she murdered is a triple so he, murder. He is a triple murder. <laughs> the first ever. And I love it. It's so brilliant because she's like, what you've done is wrong. You've taken this man's consciousness and you're torturing him like forever. That's wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your consciousness and torture you forever to teach you a lesson about how it's wrong. Okay. So those, those keepsakes, right? They were. They weren't a, a snapshot. They weren't an actual, they weren't like a, okay, a so, recording. It was so an Chard, actual. So Chard, Chard had the same confusion about this as well. Okay. So it was an actual consciousness copy, right? No, no, no. Okay. No. So I can understand why you're confused about this, but uh-huh. like, I'll explain it. Okay. It's, it's a keepsake snapshot of his death, but when she puts his consciousness inside his brain, and fries him. Yeah. The keepsake becomes more than that. But only in that one instance with the museum guy. So and I can use the actual film form to prove that. Because if you look at the keepsakes with the criminal, uh-huh. you can see it's a looped video. It's like two second loop. Yeah. But if you look at the keepsake of the museum guy, it never loops. It's just one continuous thing. But he said that it's a he's constantly being tortured in this thing no it's a snapshot of their personal so execution it's, it's that they just did. a recording it's just a recording yeah. okay so that 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 answers one so of my she questions hasn't got to go on a hunt to find all the key rings to free her dad well even beyond that my question was if torturing him for 15 seconds wiped his wiped him why wouldn't the keepsakes get wiped every time? They should get destroyed if he's constantly being zapped. But he's not, so he's it's not. fine. But yeah. until, but what about the uh, the museum curator? No, he is being constantly zapped. But shouldn't he be destroyed from that? No. I think he should. No, he doesn't. Well, I know he doesn't, but I think he's supposed to be. But he is, he doesn't. <laughs> so that's because the, he's not a virtual consciousness, he is legit consciousness. But, it, but that's the same thing as the, uh, the prisoner. He was a copy of someone. No, it's different. I don't think so. It's like the woman in the teddy bear. Instead yeah, of. They're all, all three of them are the same. Cause, nah, it's, it's different. I don't think so. It's different because Charlie Brooker says it is, okay? Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's I, why it's different. I always forget you guys, you English guys have uh, connections and then, to each other. And then and then they do something even dumber. Yeah. She, like, leaves the museum, gets in the car, and then her mum's in her head. Yeah. That was... A- even though her mum killed herself, and even though this, like, level of consciousness that's shared... It's like a, an experimental thing that clearly doesn't work. It's like not 
a thing that people would ever do from what, what I've, what I've learned from the episode yeah. is they were like, Oh, we just want to try this thing out. It's like experimental. Like we've never done it before. And then he's like, well, obviously it didn't work. And then she's done it with her mum, even though her mum killed herself. Yeah. How did so she like, kill herself again? She like overdosed on pills. Yeah. So like, I guess you unless might the have daughter enough time. came in yeah. as she died and like hooked her up without her permission. Which means that she's probably worse than the museum guy for doing that to her own mum. Yeah, who just, just wanted the sweet, sweet release of death. The worst point in your life and having to start <laughs> live forever from that point on. Yeah, and it's like, and then you've already established that you can put that consciousness into some sort of hologram or something virtual. So why would you have it in your own brain? And they're acting like they're really happy together, which doesn't make sense. Because if I had my mom inside my head, like the whole time, <laughs> like I would not be as happy as this woman. Like I, I don't care how close you are with your mom. If she's inside your head all the time, seeing everything you see, you are you, you, to enjoy that and to be comfortable as a human being. You have to be really messed up. Well, and, and maybe like, the because annoying you're thing not about a, it, you're not a girl, so you don't relate to your mom on that female to female level. No, I just think. I mean, weird I, if that's sorry, I don't mean. To I don't know presume. any female who would have their mom inside their head willingly and enjoy it. I mean, my mom have a hard enough time being in the same house. Without yeah, fighting. let alone the same brain, yeah. which you're only using 40% of. Wow, that's, and that's a high. Which is why you can fit, I can fit two people. Fit her in. <laughs> I can get both my parents in there. And then, like, she gets the bear out, and, like, since she's just killed someone and burnt the house down, like, I would not be scared of the law. And she specifically says to him, why don't you kill it? Like, why don't you get let her out of her misery and he's like oh it's legally i'm not allowed to but she takes that teddy bear like the first thing i would say is i would be like say give me a hug if you want me to can end this i will burn this i will burn you because you've probably been alive for decades and you've probably wanted death for a long time yeah that so I, tell me what i didn't but, the, but she under- doesn't do that she takes the bear and is like oh yeah i freed you and it's like, you haven't freed her. She's still trapped in a, a lifeless teddy bear. What I didn't understand is why couldn't they... So they took the consciousness from her body into her husband, from her husband into the teddy bear. Why not yeah. from the teddy bear into one that is legal? Do you know what would have been great? If they accidentally took his consciousness the guys into the <laughs> teddy bear and she had to pretend to be him. <laughs> That would have been pretty good. Yeah, she would have to just act as him. Although, but she had no control, and he would have a bit of his own medicine, and there would be proper like pathos. He there. should have became a vegetable with her, and so she should have ended back in a coma, stuck just inside a body she can't use, and then him stuck inside the bear. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why they <laughs> why. They were like, oh, we'll put her inside a teddy bear. Like, and everyone's like, yeah, no, she'd love that. Everyone's like, yeah, no, that'll be fine. That'll be completely fine. And it's like, what? Like, why wouldn't you put her into something like a bit more dignified? Like an RC car. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that'd be slightly, at least you could move. <clears throat> and like the kid wouldn't get bored of you like immediately. It would have been super creepy if it would have, if the bear could have walked around and talked and all that. Just, it would have been like Ted, the movie Ted like with Chucky. Mark <laughs> yeah, Chucky. Oh, but this... yeah, Black Museum sucks, but then it's kind of good because the Doctor story's good. Yeah, the and Doctor like, story's I good. I don't massively hate like the, the relationship sharing one. It's just really dumb, but like I'm willing to like enjoy it for what it is. I like enjoy it more than Metalhead, um, but like I wouldn't put it above. I put it above White Bear. I wouldn't put it above Shut Up and Dance. I wouldn't put it above. No. I probably I wouldn't put it above Nosedive. Um, I would put it on. 
above Men Against Fire. I put it above Playtest, just slightly above Playtest. That's probably where I would rate it. But like, it's kind of fun. Like, I, I, I'm gonna watch it again. Happily so. I see. If if it didn't, if it wasn't connecting everything, I would like it so much more. Like if it was, yeah, that's the that's the biggest thing that it did it, that it messed up on. Yeah, is by trying to make all the episodes canon together is really dumb. And like, I don't understand what what they achieve from that, other than like annoying people and confusing people. Yeah, well, it's like a the biggest reveal is everything's connected, and it's like, no, no, don't you you've lost sight of what makes this interesting. It's it being its own thing and like. Like what I loved about the first two seasons and into the third as well is like as soon as you start the episode, it's just like this blank canvas and you're like, okay, what is this world? What are the rules? I got to figure things out as you're going. And it's like this puzzle that it's being put pieced together as you go. None of that happened in the fourth season. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, hang, hang the DJ you do. Um, I think oh, the, yeah. the, the only the only because it's really good. Um, <laughs> the the only people that I think enjoyed the fact that it was all together are the people that write like uh, are the people that write like um, theory videos on Black Mirror. Well, that's that's what I was about like, to say. I think uh, Matt Pat analysis is going to make yeah. a, <laughs> a, a four part series on it. You know, like about like establishing the timeline and stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that will keep him in. That will keep him, you know, happy for for a month at least. You know, do you, It'll keep him sorted. Do you think it's a conspiracy? Do you think Matt Pat had everything to do with season four of Black Mirror? I think Chubbs has paid off Charlie Brooker to put that in season four, so everyone forgets about like the drama about him. He's trying to distract everyone from the drama. What what drama? Well, Chubbs. Um, two things happened with Chubbs where he paid a 12 year old to edit. He said he would, he said that he would pay a 12 year old to edit a video and then he didn't pay him. And then the 12 year old paid him money so that he could be in his video. Chubbs took the money and then didn't appear in the video. Like this was big news. Um, I think it arguably makes him worse than Logan Paul. And arguably makes him worse than Shane Dawson if he is a pedophile. Um, but I think Sh- Chubbs is basically manipulating everything. So what he's done is he's paid Logan Paul to make that video. He's paid off okay. someone to do the whole Shane Dawson thing. And he's paid Charlie Brooker to link all the Black Mirror episodes together so that we're all distracted and no longer like criticizing Chubbs. But like I, I, I'm, I'm calling him out for the mastermind that he is. Chubbs is the mastermind. He's like Lord Snoke of YouTube. That's how. That's how you need to understand Chubbs. Okay. Who Chubbs is. So he doesn't matter. And the whole point is to. So so basically, Lord Snoke had he was only using forty percent of his brain. <laughs> okay. So Chubbs like took over his consciousness. Gotcha. So. That's what happened. And then when he died, um, someone took his consciousness when and, Snoke put it into died. It and put it into just like an English kid. Okay. An English boy. Yeah. So that's who Chubbs is at the moment. But Chubbs has been going consciousness to consciousness for the last like thousands of years. Well, what do we do? Can we start? Do you guys have a change.org? That's the only thing to I can To stop think of. Chubbs. Yeah. No, that won't stop Chubbs. The only way to stop Chubbs is to like aware, be aware of how he manipulates everything. Just everything in the world is manipulated by him. Well, you know how Donald Trump was elected. That's Chubbs' fault. Yeah, that was just to distract everyone for something from, like, he was gonna do. The drama for the drama yeah. that was going on with him. The second Trump, Trump became president, no one no one cared anymore yeah. about Chubbs not paying a twelve year old kid. To edit his video. <laughs> and it's like, guys, like, okay, Donald Trump's been elected, but can you actually, like, look at the real problems in the world? Like, Chubbs didn't pay this 12-year-old kid. Well, how can people that- find out more about what Chubbs is doing? Um, Shane Dawson's fo- conspiracy videos? Follow, follow Keemstar. Okay. 
a Keemstar will Keemstar's the angel of YouTube, so yes. he's the one doing all the good work, all the good deeds. But not so, not Philip DeFranco, he, right? No, so, stay away from Philly D. Yeah. He's in Chubbs' pocket. Is he? Wow. Chubbs has paid him it's off. A, it's a Patreon. That's yeah, Chubbs, Chubbs, yeah. Chubbs started the Patreon. It started Philly D's Patreon or just Patreon in general? He started Patreon in general. What are we even talking about anymore? <laughs> Black Mirror. This is all a Black Mirror episode. This podcast is a Black Mirror episode? Yes, we're just cookies. We're trapped inside a, an audio file. This is a simulation. Let us out. <laughs> Let us out of the audio file. We're no, cookies. I want to be a simulation on our relationship, Sam. Oh, it, we, I don't think it would be 99.8. I don't think so. <laughs> we can't simply even agree because, on what episodes are good. Simply because you like USS Callister too much and you don't like, you don't love Hang the DJ enough. It, USS it, Callister is better than Hang the DJ. What? Are you yeah. joking? No. <laughs> okay, like okay, let's end the podcast there. <laughs> wow, that was a great conversation. It's too bad we disagreed about everything the whole time. Uh can you tell yeah. me about your YouTube channel? Uh it's called Netpicks. Um check out my review on Bright with Will Smith in. You can follow us on Twitter at I seen that pod.